everybody. I am meteorologist Lindsay Stores, and this is Lindsay Science School. We're going to give everybody a few minutes so that they can tune in here. We'll give maybe two minutes for everybody to join in. But yeah, I want you to talk a little bit okay. about, I mean, the idea behind it. We were talking about how can we help all these parents yeah. who are home and trying to get their kids to do their homework and yes. keep them busy and occupied, but with real learning. And yes. you are such a scientist. She proved it last <laughs> week when we were talking about the earthquakes. She was our I, total expert rock star. Well, thank you. I love science all sciences yeah. in fact I just adore them they were always my favorite subject growing up I decided when I was probably seven that I wanted to be a scientist and then it was nine years old when I decided I wanted to be a meteorologist, meteorologist. so we thought That's this would cool. be a good idea to help teachers to help parents I know teachers are struggling for um, things that they can links they can give their kids their, right. their students and they to, can't be there all the time learn. they can't yeah. be there all the time exactly and this is something so, uh, we're live on Facebook now yes. but we want to tell your friends and share with friends that are looking for similar things you know just what about a 20 minute to half an hour lesson yeah yeah it's gonna okay. be really quick the lesson will probably be 10 to 15 minutes long and then after that we'll be answering questions um, so if you are on Facebook you can throw a question into um, the, comment the comment section, section there yeah. and we will try to get to as many questions as we can okay at the end to answer all those. right so hopefully people are listening and yep. joining us now and what are you gonna do today what's the okay, lesson well we're gonna learn about um, several kinds of sciences and then we're gonna learn about the water cycle so let's head on over to my classroom so I can I'm gonna put you to work too we're gonna to do some science experiments so this is our science school classroom and yes there are many different kinds of sciences there's chemistry there's biology there's physics and then as I mentioned a minute ago there is my favorite science which is meteorology now that's a really big word isn't it meteorology is the study of weather, all kinds of weather that we get in the atmosphere. So as I mentioned, when I was nine years old, I decided I wanted to be a meteorologist. That is a scientist that studies the weather day in and day out. And we can actually forecast the weather so that you know what to expect, so that you know what kind of clothes to wear uh, for that day ahead and for the week ahead as well. So there's one part of weather that is very vital to understanding if you're going to forecast the weather, and that is the water cycle. And that's what I want to focus on today. Now, did you know that 75% of the earth is water? It's in the oceans, it's in lakes, it's in rivers. Well, we've got Mr. Sun up there in the sky that's able to warm up that water. And when the water gets warm enough, it can actually change the water from a liquid to a gas. We call that gas water vapor. And when liquid water turns into water vapor, it's a word called evaporation. So when we evaporate that water, those water vapor particles go up in the air. They go high enough into the air that they actually get to a point where it's cold enough that they start to turn into a cloud. They condense into a cloud. That's the second part of the water cycle is that condensation. Now, when a cloud gets heavy enough with water, lots and lots of water vapor in it, then we get the third part of the water cycle, which is precipitation. That's when you get rain or snow falling from those clouds down to the earth. So that's step three of the water cycle. Well, what happens to that water once it hits the ground? It runs back to where it began through rivers, through streams, and it makes it all the way back to those lakes and oceans where the cycle can start all over again. So I wanted to um, go back to our science desk now, and we're going to go to Miss Mary, who is my assistant for the day. I'm going to have assistants that will be helping me hmm. um, with science school so that we can do some fun little experiments. Well, this is a true test because I'm an English major. Yes. The other part of the brain. I am not an English major. <laughs> that's <laughs> so why we work so well that's together. Why we, that's exactly right. <laughs> so today we're going to do two experiments for you. The first we're going to do is we're going to make a cloud in a jar. And this is something that you guys can do at home. I bet you have almost all these things that you need for both these ingredients okay. at home. So for the first one, one, we need water. We've okay. got that. It needs to be hot, hot water, water, too. I don't want it to get on the desk. Yes. Mary's going to pour that just into the bit. jar. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, maybe about a fourth of the way full. Okay. Maybe just do a little, a little bit, bit more. more there. Okay. Yeah, let's do a 
little bit. And it's really more. hot, right? It is very okay. hot. You want it to be hot, so parents okay. need to help with this. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to spray this hairspray into no, it. No, Mary's going to turn away hair. so she doesn't ruin our desk with the hairspray. Yep, just give it a, another good squirt in there. We want to have a lot of particles in there. Okay. okay. Now put the lid on, and okay. we've got ice in upside this down, cup, right? Upside down, right? Upside down. Yep. And then you're going to put a little bit of ice. Now, what we're doing here is we're mimicking what happens in the atmosphere. Okay. So down at the surface, we get those the water warming up, mm -hmm. and then it's able to change that water into water vapor. So you can see how it's getting a little bit cloudy in there? It is. Can you see that? Okay, so the reason we put the ice on the top there is because, again, when you go up in the atmosphere, it gets colder. If you've ever hiked a mountain, you know that it's colder at the top of the mountain than it is at the bottom of the mountain. Okay, so, so right, right now that evaporating water is now grabbing onto the little particles grabbing, of hairspray. Yes, the reason oh. we wanted to spray that hairspray into there is because you need little particles in the atmosphere, little pieces of dust or little pieces of pollution mm -hmm. for that water vapor to grab onto and and then when you get enough of those water vapor droplets, it's able to form into a cloud once it can cool enough. So that's why we've got our ice because it's helping to cool it. Now, Mary, lift off. Let's zoom in on this once again. Okay, they have and I that want shot you, there. I want you to lift, once they do zoom in, I want you to lift off the lid okay. and you're going to see a little magic. Look at that Look at cloud that. coming out of there. Isn't that fun? Is it going to rain on us? <laughs> well, that's our next experiment. But then also there's condensation here. There so that's is. on the bottom of the lid, like yep. when you have a cold drink exactly sitting right. out in exactly humidity. It doesn't right. happen much that's here. That's condensation yeah. as well. Yeah, huh. when you get the water vapor it's in the so air cool. condensing around something colder. Okay, now our second experiment, we're going to make it rain into this jar. These cotton balls are going to rain, okay? <laughs> what? So, whoops, I'm going to fall. Okay, okay, I'm going to slide these over to you. Mary's going to do this again. We're trying again. to keep now, our what, social distancing yes, a little bit are. here. So. Okay, so what I'm going to do first of all is I've got a clear plastic cup right here and I've got a little pin. Um, I'm going to poke holes into the bottom of this cup. Okay. So we'll just do a few of those. Let me do a few more. I'm trying to figure out what she's creating uh, with this. <laughs> okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to stick that into the top of the jar. Push okay. it down. Push it in. Yep. Yep. Push Perfect it in. Perfect fit. Okay. Now put the cotton balls in. All of them? Yep. Okay. Just throw them in. They're going to act as our clouds. Okay. Okay. And you can push them down just a little bit. All right. Now what we're going to do, and you don't need the blue food coloring, but I'm going to give Miss Mary some blue food coloring. Use the same water that you used for the first experiment okay. and put a little bit of blue food coloring in it. And the reason I'm putting blue food coloring in it is so that you can see it a little bit better on TV when it rains. Now if you're okay. doing this at home, you don't need the blue. Here's a spoon okay. to stir it up. Okay. Pretty. Yes. So now... You're just going to start slowly pouring that over the cotton balls. Now this okay. is what happens in the atmosphere as you get more and more water vapor condensing into clouds. See how the cotton balls are holding that pretty well right now? Mm -hmm. We're not seeing anything rain into the bottom of the jar. Um, but as we get more and more water vapor and those clouds get heavier and heavier with the rain, you're going to start noticing that it is starting to rain into our jar there. So our cotton balls have started raining. Maybe pour a little bit more water in from, okay. yep, from that, and then you'll be able to see it a lot better as we load up the atmosphere with go. more and more water vapor. But they trap it like the cotton ball first, yep. and then it gets heavy and once on it's, the bottom. Once it's okay. too heavy, that's when it starts raining. So that is our science experiment for the day. We made awesome. a cloud in the bottle <laughs> that um, explains evaporation and condensation. Right. And then right here, you're seeing how condensation turns into precipitation with our cotton balls raining And there. I loved how you explained how it all is this cycle. It's it one cycle. It starts out in, like, yeah. the Great Salt Lake. Yeah. And when the system moves over, that it evaporates and it rains on the valley. You're exactly right. Okay, and and this up... cycle is happening all over the earth at all times. And it's our job as meteorologists to forecast when these different parts of the cycle will happen, especially precipitation. That's whenever, what everybody yeah. wants to know. They want to know about precipitation and when that will but happen. But then it's tricky here because we have the mountains and the valleys and canyon winds and yep. different things. So you have to 
predict yep. if it's going to make it through that wind, if it's, it's going to, oh, wow, you're that's exactly really difficult. You're right. So it's, it's a really fun job because we get to have so much fun. Look how much it's raining in there it's now. It's pouring now. It's pouring. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to answer a few little questions for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run over here and I'm going to grab my phone so that we can look at some of the questions. Oh, look at the Facebook if, page. Okay. Yes, if you've got a question that you want to ask um, me about anything that we've learned today or even if you've got a totally different question that you want to ask, mm -hmm. um, go ahead and ask me and we'll see if you can stump me or not. So let me pull up the 2 News Facebook page. That's, again, where we're live right now. I'm going to scroll down. And, and this find. is going to be every Tuesday and this Thursday every morning. Every Tuesday and Thursday, yeah, at 9 30. So we'll have a little bit of time each day to go through and, and teach you something new about science that you would most likely be learning yeah. between third grade and sixth grade. And it's also and saved. So yes. it's saved on our page as yeah. well. So you can, if you did miss out or you had some friends miss out, you can go back to the KUTV Facebook page and watch it again exactly. with your kids. Exactly. Yeah. And teachers can take the link from the KUTV page and throw it into their lesson plans and use this not only for this year, but for future years as yeah. well. Um, let's see. Doug Moore says, what part of the brain are you usually, are you normally using, Lindsay? I'm the left side of the brain. And That's I'm the, the right. One. Yep, you're I'm the in my right, right mind. You're the She's, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Any other questions that we've got here? Throw your questions in there. Lots of people saying they're loving this and that it's oh, really good. cool. Kids are enjoying it. Um, oh, Colleen's asking, what makes lightning? We're actually going to do a science school episode on lightning and what We're makes gonna lightning. We're going to have Ron work with you on that oh, one. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. I've got a fun <laughs> science experiment for that one using balloons and light bulbs, and it'll be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, but what causes lightning is that inside a thunderstorm cloud, you actually have hailstones in most thunderstorm clouds. Those hailstones hitting together cause a, ch a change in the charge of that cloud compared with the ground. And so the lightning is what Like when the, you f start a fire with exactly, a stone. Exactly, okay. exactly. So the lightning is what's used to try to neutralize that charge. So you've got one area where it's positive and mm -hmm. one negative and it's trying to neutralize that. So wow. that's what happens. Okay, see and I've lightning. always learned, I mean, starting the morning show with Sterling Polson yes. and I've worked with you and I've worked with Chase and Jill and it's, I've, I, I love learning stuff like yes. this. Yes, oh, it's so it's fun. Fascinating it's fascinating to figure out how everything works. Because we live in a world of weather. Yeah. Weather impacts us every single day, and I think that's why so many people are fascinated by it. Okay, real yeah. quick, any other questions let's before? Let's see. Um, some, let's see. Joanna says, how long have you been a meteorologist? Hmm. I have now been a meteorologist for almost 20 years. So you started when you were five. I was five. You're exactly <laughs> right, Mary. See, she can do math. She's super smart. Um, so yeah, I've been doing it for almost 20 years. 16 of those years. It'll Here. be 16 this summer here at KUTV in Salt Lake City. Oh, this is fantastic. So, There's yeah, so many people really cooped up fun. at home and figuring yes, things out. Yeah. And I've always thought it was fun also to, to learn about it. And then when you do go outside, I mean, we can see different kinds of clouds here today yep, in the exactly valley. Right. And you, you can, can say, oh, I learned that yep. from Lindsay. Look, the water yeah. vapor has condensed into clouds. Right. We've got a lot of those today. Um, let's see. Kaylin asks, why are clouds always white or gray? The reason they're always white or gray is it depends on the amount of water vapor that you've got in those clouds. If you just have a little bit of water vapor, they appear white. But if you have a lot of water vapor condensing in those clouds, they get heavy, there's a lot of water in there, they block out a lot of the sun, and because of that, they turn just gray. Like this. Just like that. They You're were exactly white right. yes. with just a little water vapor and then the, the darker the blue got, the You're heavier exactly they right. got. The more the sunlight that huh. we, that we um, cut out. Okay, Sherry asked what makes thunder. Thunder is actually the expansion of air. That bolt of lightning we were just talking about, it's so hot, it's hotter than the surface of the sun. So as that lightning bolt comes down, the air expands because when air gets hot, it expands. And so when it expands that quickly, it makes that noise. Okay. And that's what you hear as thunder. Because sometimes you hear thunder and you think it's from the clouds, but there's really lightning going on, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you can't see lightning, but you can hear thunder, there is lightning somewhere. Sometimes okay. the lightning is in between the clouds too. Right. And that's why you can't see it. Cloud to cloud lightning is what we call mm -hmm. that. Um, let's see. Will all clouds eventually produce or become rain clouds? No. 
they will not actually. Um, if they don't collect enough water vapor, if not enough condenses into it, then they don't. We can actually have what are called fair weather clouds, which is where we still get that I condensation. Like <laughs> I like those too, yes. We get that condensation into a cloud, but it's not enough water vapor in the cloud to get it to, to rain or snow. It's See? just enough to block the sun just a little bit, let you cool sun, off. Just give you a little bit of shade in the summertime. Nice. You're exactly right. Did you right. always want to be a teacher too? Uh, I just get to do my teaching on TV. <laughs> I love cool. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Chantel asked, what makes tornadoes? That's another science lesson that we are going to learn in the coming weeks. But tornadoes are formed when you have air moving from different directions as it uh, flows through the atmosphere. And that gets the air to spin. And I'll be able to explain that a little bit better to you in an upcoming episode. And it has to be, the clouds have to be there. The storm has to yes. be there. And the winds. Everything. In, yeah. Everything's got to be there. Everything's got to line up for you to get a tornado. Um, let's see, Addie, who is six years old, asks, how is snow made? Snow Ooh. is made in the exact same way that we talked about with the water cycle. This, this here? You get, yes, kind you, of. Get, you get the uh, water vapor that evaporates. It condenses into a cloud. The difference is that the atmosphere is very cold to make snow. So that's the only difference. It's still the water cycle happening. It's just that your precipitation falls as snow because those temperatures are cold enough. Did you know that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Mm -hmm. So if it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside, you're most likely to see some snow. Now that's not always the case. It can get yeah. complicated. You can get some freezing rain. Some crazy stuff can happen in the atmosphere. So but up, generally you get up snow. in the atmosphere, the clouds, it's still water, but once it hits the air, it turns to snow. No, 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 no. It's okay. Snow it's up snow here. up here. In fact, even in the summertime, a lot of the time it's snow in the clouds that's melting as huh. it drops. Cause it's so surface. cold up there. Because it's so cold. Okay. It's always so cold up there. If you ever fly in an airplane, sometimes they have the screen in front of you and it tells you the temperature outside. Take a look at the temperature outside when you're flying in an airplane. Many times it's minus 40 degrees right. out there. Yeah. Even in the summertime, it's so cold when you get that high in the atmosphere where our clouds are formed. And so even in the summertime, up in the clouds, a lot of the time it is snow up there. And then as the snowflakes fall, they melt once they hit that warmer air mass into raindrops. Okay, and another thing you have taught us is virga. Yes. And that is rain that comes down, but it doesn't actually hit the ground, that's right? That's true, yes. So that's what happens when we talked about evaporation. Mm -hmm. Remember when uh, it takes liquid water and turns it into water vapor? Did you know that can happen as it's falling from the clouds? <laughs> so you can have raindrops falling from the clouds, but because the air is so dry, it's able to evaporate before it actually reaches the ground. So sometimes you'll see a rain cloud out there and it looks like it's raining but then that rain disappears before it reaches the ground that's a fancy word called virga virga yeah. and that's because it's so dry here so the dry. humidity we live is in so a desert right we live in a cold desert so our temperatures don't get as hot as they do in places like phoenix and las vegas if you've ever visited there but yeah we don't get a yeah. whole lot of rain only 16 inches of rain each year here in salt lake city okay. So Lindsay's Science School will be every Tuesday and yeah. Thursday morning, right around 9.30, if you want to watch live on Facebook. And you can always get her lessons in the morning from 4.25 <laughs> until 9 o'clock. 4.25 till minutes, 7. I've got a little weather <laughs> lesson for you. We are live on air on KUTV. And then from 7 until 9, we are live over on KJAZZ Channel 14. Yep, and so then like, again at noon yep, for again an hour. at noon as well. So when you're eating your lunch, you can turn on 2 News at noon and see Mary and myself. Mary will tell you all about about the news, mm -hmm. I will tell you all about the weather. So again, this has been Lindsay Science School. We're gonna do this every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Each week we'll explain a different science topic. Most of them will be weather because that's my specialty yeah. as a meteorologist, but we'll also touch on a few other things as well. And then again, go to the Facebook page and leave your questions in the comments and then we'll be able to get to as many of those as we can. Okay, and next time bring your friends. <laughs> have a great day. Bye-bye.